Hi, I'm Carol O'Meara, horticulture entomologist with Colorado State University Extension here in Boulder County. It's midsummer, and that means the honeymoon is over, and we have pest problems moving into the garden. Let's take a quick look at a couple of insects that could be bugging your plants right now. We have a beautiful currant bush here, and we're looking forward to getting a lot of those currants off for jams and other types of fresh eating. But one of the things that's starting to happen is that we've got currant aphids on this plant. These aphids will feed on the leaves, and they'll start making them look a little bit blistered or calloused. They can even change the color so that they have a little bit of a red or russet coloration to it. It's not that you see the aphids sitting on the top of the leaf like this, but rather when you turn that leaf over, you're going to see an entire colony of these aphids just nestled up in all of these little bulges and bubbles that they've got the leaves um, changed to do. How they're changing the leaf is they've got a little bit of a growth regulator in their saliva. They're actually pulling the sap right out of the plant. And as you can see, these girls are really going to town on the leaves. The leaves look shiny and sticky, and they're all gnarled up. That's a sure sign that you've got these aphids. So turn the leaf over and take a look, and you can see all these aphids underneath. Another sign that you might be having a lot of aphid problems is that you have a lot of predators on the plant, like ladybugs. Ladybugs are a popular insect. They're one of the beneficials in the garden. And as you can see, they really can just crawl all over this plant and tell you by their mere presence that they're hunting something. And in this case, it's gonna be the aphids. So when you see a lot of ladybugs working a plant, don't go out there and hose that plant down to kill the ladybugs. Let them do their job and they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna clean up these aphids for you. As for the fate of this particular plant, it's really not in dire trouble. It can take a little bit of pressure from these aphids and you really don't need to do more than maybe hose it off with a strong jet of water coming up underneath of the, the shrub. And in general, the currants are gonna be just fine. As you can see here, we have some that are already starting to ripen out and we have pretty good fruit set. The aphids aren't gonna interfere with that at all. Let's take a look at some more insects that we're finding in the garden right now. Another type of predator to look for on these, if you have a lot of aphids, is the green lacewing. These are really good predators to have around. They're lovely as adults, but the larvae are gonna be eating just a ton of these aphids for you. So if you see a lacewing, leave that one alone too and let them fly around to lay their eggs where they're needed most. So I'm starting to see the pretty white Splitting around that mean cabbage loopers are in town. So if you're growing brassicas, if you're growing cabbages, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, any one of the brassica family, you want to start scouting your plants now to see if you've got the little green caterpillars that are going to start chewing uh, holes in the leaves. Actually, the, the little worms don't do too much damage, except that they can drill right into the head of cabbage, and that makes it a little less palatable for you and I. So how you and good gardeners really need to put their eyes on their plants a couple of times a week is you have to look on the undersides of the leaves. So what this means is you're gonna take each leaf and you're gonna turn it up to see if you can spot any type of eggs or little green worms. We're not seeing it there or here so much. But on this one, you can see the culprit right here. This is one of those little inchworms that eat the leaves of your cabbage plants, these little green loopers. They're pretty easy to control. If you wanted to, you could just take it off and kind of toss it aside. It really can't wait, make its way back into the plant unless you're tossing it into a whole row of these things. Or you can give it to your neighbors as a gift for their plants. Or you can get out Bacillus thuringiensis. BT is a very common organic control for caterpillars like this. It's a soil bacterium that you mix up into a spray. The caterpillar eats it. It gets into the second stomach of the insect. They have three of them. And once it gets in there, it gives it a killer bellyache. So these little guys, they're pretty harmless. They don't do too much damage until they get larger. Like any teenager, they eat a lot. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of these guys by scouting your plants and picking them off. We're over here in the beet area, and these are sizing up and starting to look really good. They're getting close to harvest, but something is going wrong with the leaves. 
I don't know if you can see it here, but they're starting to get tunneled. They look kind of mottled, and maybe you mistake this for a little bit of sun scald. But what's happening is they have these little maggots inside. So if you take and tease open the leaf, you'll see that the larva of this tiny little fly is having its way with the beets. There are those little maggots right here. These aren't really delicious in any kind of a salad, although they might be a little protein source, but they live in a little tunnel in between the top and the lower layer of the leaves. And so they're moving around here and they're feeding and they're just trying to get a little bit of a meal before they drop to the soil to pupate. On beets like this, where we're letting them size up for the roots, it really doesn't make too much difference at this stage. These beets are getting really close to harvest. But if you're intending to eat the leaves of beets, chard, maybe your spinaches or your lettuces, seeing any type of minor activity like this means you've got to get that leaf off of the plant so that you don't have a lot of maggots in your food. This is just one of the things to look for and try to rogue out and destroy it. Don't compost the leaves. The maggots will continue to develop in the compost pile. This means you've got to kind of squish them up or tear them up yourself and dispose of the leaves if you don't want to have this problem chronically in your garden. Another insect to be on the lookout for is just starting to get a uh, roll on things in your garden, and that is the cucumber beetle. We have both spotted and striped cucumber beetles here in Colorado, and they go after, you guessed it, cucumbers. But they also go after pumpkins and squash. They go after melons. They like a lot of different plants. These small, well, they're about a quarter to a half inch long green-yellow insects with either stripes or black spots really will chew down a lot of the leaves and the problem with them is that they lay eggs in the soil at the base of the plants and the larvae, tiny little caterpillars, will be chewing on the roots of the plant so the plant will get attacked from above and below. A good way to thwart them if you're having chronic problems is a good mulch. Now in this garden they put down plastic mulch and that's a really great thing to do for a lot of these vining crops. You get bigger fruit and you get more of them under plastic culture. But they've left little gaps right at the base of the plant which means conditions are perfect for mom uh, cucumber beetle to get in there and lay her eggs. So if they were to take just a little bit of mulch and put it right around each plant, they probably will go a long way towards interrupting the life cycle of that particular insect. Of course, in a community garden, pickings are pretty good out here for uh, egg laying areas. But in your home garden, what you wanna do, even if you have it under plastic, is try to take away that egg laying area and mulch right around the base of these plants with a little bit of organic mulch like straw. Put a good three to four inches right nestled up against the plant and then let the plastic do its thing and you won't be bothered by these pesky little creatures.